I'm just coming now. Hi, good evening. Uh, uh, me again, Sarah Chiu. I'm talking about the language core of human speech. And um, I reject the idea of a uh, family tree. And I believe that we all share a common core in terms of our language. And I'm going to present an Eastern view uh, as a traveler. And here it is. Um, okay. Good evening. Um, thank you again for tuning in. Um, this week I'm going to continue with uh, my talk about the letter A and K. And here uh, it is. Then um, I will start with my. Uh, I will start with my <laughs> slideshow. Okay, one second. Give me one second. There you are. Okay, I've been talking about uh, the um, letter A, Y, it's in the shape of a bullhorn. And now I'm going to uh, deeper into uh, all this uh, relationship with all different languages. There you go. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, the basic uh, thing is that I believe there is a shared verbal language before writing. And because all the earliest writing system express similar and abstract understanding, and, um, and they also use the same sound to express similar idea, which I don't think those are coincident. And again, uh, I don't think uh, grammar is that important. You know, grammar is just like any local custom. And now I think the linguist uh, pays too much attention on grammar without looking at the core of all languages. And as you can see, I highlighted all this, you know, because this word are actually from the K sound, you know, and then the essence, the E here is a vowel sound, which I grouped together with the A, E, I, O, U, represented by the bull head. And also the gist, which also the uh, uh, is a mutation. If you speak German, it will be gist, you know. So the K and G uh, was similar in ancient times too. So I will show you right here what I mean by the basic, the key and the core of the languages. Because this is Sumerian, uh, really meaning either the reed itself, you know, a uh, uh, grass, wild grass, and also it means the essence. And this is the uh, growth tip of a plant also in Chinese. And this is a Babylonian uh, symbol. And this is a Chinese writing. You see how similar they are. And with this bull head right there indicating some kind of a conscience and uh, the key of living, you know, a soul being. And this is also in Sumerian, the uh, word representing life and living itself. And then this is Chinese and this is uh, back to Sumerian and this is uh, hieroglyph, Egyptian hieroglyph, the car, uh, meaning part of the soul and of course this is Phoenician Greek and turn into what you know as K and another uh, mutation will turn into a K itself. Now um, I uh, want to show you, you know, the basic idea of the uh, vowel K and uh, the consonant K and the G sound uh, actually has a lot to do with uh, leadership and also the initiation. As you know, the A is the beginning of the Western writing uh, uh, circle and then the the K and the G is uh, the beginning of the Eastern writing system if they are using a syllable system and um, here it, and of course you know Chinese is not in within those system uh, but then I will show you by comparing uh, Sumerian and Chinese you show how uh, close they were in in terms of abstract understanding in ancient time and then a um, as I said you know why the alpha is beginning with the a, why the Ach also beginning with A, and also action, everything that begins some kind of movement is always an indicator by a vowel itself. And then uh, in a concrete way, you know, the guy and the king, and then also the kinetic movement is, all, is the other way of looking at the, uh, the, the 
the representation of K in meaning the initiation of an action. And I want to show you how animalism is embedded in human speech and in writing since the very beginning. And of course, you know all this uh, ancient cave painting. And um, of course, uh, very early on, you know, you will see the Sumerian, the Assyrian, and also the Hittite. And these are all the, uh, in the middle, uh, what, what we call the nearest now, you know, all this culture. Uh, how do you think that they incorporate all this idea, making all this horn crown without uh, speaking a lot about this spirituality, about the bull itself? So you could see that they try to take up the power of the bull by turning it into a crown for themselves. So you can be very sure that this animalism is already embedded into the pattern of speech and the writing. And um, I'll show you now. And the A is the most ambiguous uh, vowel and um, K is the most used consonant, uh, scientifically proved already. Of course, when I say K, it also included the G sound, the Gs, okay? And then um, this is a Sumerian. If you turn it that way, of course, it becomes the A too. And when you, whenever you see that kind of a bullhead, it always expresses a living and a moving entity. And then, uh, of course, it means the head of an animal. And when it turns to some abstract understanding, you know, it'll be the alma, the soul, which leads to action. Without the soul not being a soul being, you won't be able to move around. You don't have that mobility. And then, uh, of course, this alpha, is the proto synaitic writing and this is the Chinese writing. Uh, whenever you see this symbol, it will always represent an unseen energy. And uh, the, the K itself, you know, uh, always also is the image and animal head, uh, which you can understand is the mind and the brain of uh, the soul animal. And it uh, goes deeper to mean the conscious thoughts, you know, leading to kinetic action. And um, uh, it has its remnants, you know, as the, the word kephali in Greek. And of course, by the mutation of sound, it becomes cephal, you know, in, in English. You know, you, you still use a lot of these words in medical terms. And um, also this uh, an ancient Egyptian writing, ka, which means the soul. And this word here actually means uh, the thought in Chinese. Can you see the bull head is right there? And then there is a Chinese sign standing in between the A and the, and the K because uh, in a dialect in Chinese, it actually pronounces Ka means the foot. And then it also maintains the sound as A ah in Chinese, even though we are not using the, the alphabetic system. And here you will see the A writing. And this is Sumerian, all this, the wild bull, and then the cow itself is uh, all represented by this owl, owl, and then this Akkadian, and this is proto sinaitic You're very sure that it's alf, or later become alpu, and then, and this is the Chinese, and these are all the, we say ngao, which means the, the, the all kinds of bull, cow, ox, anything. And of course, you turn it around, it will be easy for you to understand. It become the alpha in Greek. And of course, uh, it came from the idea of that bull horn itself. And it represents the horn head. And from that, it always comes with this owl sound. Either it uh, represents the, the writing itself as alpha or alpha. It means authority, audacity, and then the uh, uh, Hebrew God Al. Of course, now sometimes they spell it as E L to distinguish it from other spelling, and then it also means the spark of life, the living vigor, the self. Of course, it become alto, that ability to move automatically, and then uh, also it means the leading force. That's why it leads to alphabetical writing circle, and then all these uh, words like animal, which become uh, the word animal also, the apex, the act, all these will be led by the same uh, writing itself and then the car in hieroglyph and then this is Sumerian uh, this is school sound and then 
This is a writing in Babylonian Sumerian, become cuneiform right there. It has the gu sound or the ge sound. And then this is Chinese, as I said, they are uh, identical. And then we have the sound of girl girl or car itself and then um, either then representing the food in this uh, sounds and we also use the same sound just visually differentiated them uh, to mean the powerful cattle uh, itself and it's ga gu gu kin kin okay and you can see how close it it is and all this word is still exists in english as cattle carabao is a kind of buffalo in asia and captain as the leader and then of course you know the leader is the head and also in the abstract sense you represent the spirit the soul the mind the kinetic force and um, of course uh, when the patriarchal society took over it become only the male um, monopoly and it becomes the male representative or the pinners the food the generative power which become the word create also and um, you will see that the pinners and the food in in ancient times seem to uh, play pun with each other. Uh, if you ask anyone who speaks Hebrew, they will know that the food word is precisely means the uh, penis also. And uh, even in Greek, you know, the pet is the food and then the penis, you see the same uh, use of the consonant too. And you will see that this uh, in Sumerian also used to represent the penis by the food. And also, of course, you know, the hieroglyph will, will write it, will draw it directly as the penis and this is the male generative power of the universe and uh, now uh, in this slide I will show you all this writing from ancient time from east to west and about this K and uh, A sound and uh, from the early pictograph this is Sumerian cuneiform host the sound of Gu uh, the G or the K and the A sound and this is uh, hieroglyph, the ka sound, this is proto sinaitic goes the other way as the A sound, and this is Chinese, we have different symbols, but we have the sound ngao, okay, and um, actually means cattle, and, um, and we have the word gu, it actually means a powerful uh, uh, cattle also and this become the determinative what we Chinese call determinative whenever you see that mark it either mean, means a living being or an animal itself and this is ga and kin and, uh, kin and kin and this all mean cattle and why do we need so many different words to mean cattle by itself you know because this all handed down from very very ancient time different mutation we still uh, maintained and uh, look at this word um, other than the determinative there is a word right there if i turn it that way you um, uh, it actually has a sound gu in cantonese again i'm using cantonese as the base of this research which is a very ancient chinese dialect and um this is Sumerian, um, uh, Gu, this is also uh, another symbol representing the gold, you know, can you hear the sound of gold and the Gu and the Gu, and this is some Sumerian sign I want you to see, they are kind of related to the gold family, and then this, there is a Chinese word Gu, actually it means a black ram, also the, the, the gold and, and, and the Cat, uh, also the gold family and then we have this ga which means first and chief and in Sumerian this symbol itself also means the first and the chief and uh, this is Sumerian you see the east and the west we throw symbol backward and forward backward and forward the sound actually maintained and hidden uh, very subtly and then uh, this is Phoenician A of course alpha and then the Greek and it goes on like this and then uh, sometimes you see when the Greek write artistically it actually goes back like the earliest pictograph of the uh, of the Sumerian writing and um, I will see show you the K this is Greek you see the kappa the cap is the head you know the A is also uh, meaning the head and it leads to even uh, if 
is in the animal family it'll be copper and gold and Aries and Ram okay and all this you will see that the car and the R is very very consistent this is Brahmi the earliest uh, Indic writing system and this is old Aramic look at how close they are and then this is Hebrew and interestingly the cursive form of Hebrew actually are uh, the cursive A of Hebrew Aleph actually took the, the K form and then in Brahmi, the uh, A actually takes the K form. Can you see all this? Everyone takes a part of it. It's just reversing it back and forth. Uh, from now on, these uh, from here to here, it's already known by the scholars. You know, I just took took it out from some books which already known, and this is the uh, actual mutation of the writing itself. And uh, from this form, from Burmese, it becomes the classic Sanskrit, a very important uh, Indian uh, writing system. And uh, in the Sanskrit system, the A is the first vowel and the K is actually the first consonant. And uh, it always related to the head and the soul as a meaning. Okay? And then uh, before I go on with Sanskrit, I want you to see uh, when they travel even further to the east, you know, uh, there is a system called Sittam. Uh, they actually use this writing uh, in the uh, Japanese Buddhist system. And then uh, because the writing media is a brush, you can see that exactly the same form. But because since this is written by the Japanese uh, with a brush itself, so it looks very, very different. But it's actually uh, also an A sound and um, we will see the mutation of the K form right here and this become the K uh, form of the uh, Sanskrit and in Sanskrit uh, you will have the mutation the K in the G the Go, Gu, Gava, O this means cattle and cow and from this uh, slide itself I, will show, I have already shown you that how the K, A and K change within the Western system and this is within the Chinese system this is within the other uh, uh, Indic system itself, everyone talk from the core itself. Everyone is share part of that core. And um, of course, you know, to make you understand it easily, I show you the changing form of leader in the West. You know, from the car, the hieroglyph, one way it goes this way, become the K, and the other one uh, goes to the other as the A in the Greek. And of course, it's very easy to find words to prove this saying, you know, because the alpha is always has to do the first, the leader. It is always present in uh, words like the soul and action and something animated. And and then the K, the carp, is always uh, exist in the kafali, the head words, and also kinasi, the motion words. You can see them very clearly. And then towards the east, because of the mechanical difference in copying scripts by hand, and I will show you um, the other way of um, changing. And this is the Sumerian uh, writing or sh symbol showing the head and the first. And this is Chinese, we draw the head, and also we have all this symbol. Um, showing the first and the last but we use this this only stay in the numbering ancient numbering system we don't use it in the writing it's become the numbering system in Chinese and then the Phoenician actually holds also part of it as you can see this is Tao for us we say Tao it means one end of a thing and Tao and, and Tao in Phoenician is a, the same writing it means the end of the last alphabet and you can see the same sound right there and then uh, ignoring all this we go to the simply writing system towards the east and this is the first consonant in the uh, Brahmi the first Indic writing system A this is the first uh, vowel and also the writing system and you will see that this is the intermediate state and because of the copying you will see that we copy things into different things and yeah, and Sanskrit become like this and Siddham become like this, but they all mean exactly the same thing. The Ka sound means always the head and the first and uh, go back to the West. It always means the cap, okay, the car and the cap. And then um, to this, 
you will see the intermediate stage of the writing itself then it was copied into also some things which seems different but basically you can still trace them these are the a words and the a also always means the head or the first and of course in the western system you have the ask to mean that and um, here I want to show you how the ancient expressed their animated mobility and this is a kind of mobility that they show all these are Chinese and we have a writing developed from this and actually this retained three different sounds we have the A sound retained we have the SO which I can easily find in the Hebrew and the Arabic system which means food because these all mean food, okay? And then we also have the pat sound, and actually the pat, if you can easily link it to the um, Greek system, the podi, and the pes in the Latin. So it seems that the Chinese system maintain all this Hebrew and Greek and Latin system sounds as well. And then, in another way, um, you will see that uh, we have another writing from the same writing we developed this way and we developed that way we call it joke right there which you can also find in Arabic Raju okay Jew here and then from the Jew you can also have the Giri and the Jew Jiri right here in the uh, Sumerian system and then in Chinese we have this writing you you see two bull head but we actually means you know walking the two foot itself we have the sound bow and foul and then it actually means the food and in English you, you still have linked to you can still link them together the foul and the food and uh, the writing itself changed from this and to this and then we also mutate into girl and car and which means the calf and the curb and the king all this is related to to food in the eastern in the Chinese system, and then I can still find the gin and goop and also in Sumerian, and of course you know in the Greek system you can find the scallows which means the food, and then you have the uh, Sanskrit gum which related to food. You see the gar right there, the gamba in Greek which means the calf. So. I use this here I use the Chinese writing as a center you can see that we still link to all the other system which they set in a different family tree that's why I said I don't believe in this family tree system or uh, we are all on an equal ground sharing one same core okay and then and I will show you more of the same writing. This is the Sumerian uh, writing uh, showing the G and the J sound. And this actually means the base, anything made of wood. And this is actually Chinese, of course, you know, as, as K or K. This actually means the, the, the foot of a furniture or sometimes it just means the foot. And this is Sanskrit, the Ga. And this is also closely related where your base is. Sometimes it can mean the village, the house and this is exactly where you sit you can see the the, the stool right there easily and of course the greek uh, adopted the p sound a pi sound but um as i said they retain the scalo the foot the k sound right there and then uh, i can also show you a bunch of words in greek the knemi and then the kaka and the kili this all means the three-legged base and then um, I can show you a pictograph from linear B. This is a K. Can you see that this is actually showing the base, a three-legged base? And then uh, from the Sanskrit, you can actually easily link it to Tibetan car. This is a car in Tibetan. Uh, whenever you see this car, this actually means the foot itself or the root or the base itself. So the abstract meaning is still right there. In the Chinese, we actually um, have a, a word like this. And a person sitting on a chair means gay or go. For us, it means your, your abode, where you sit, where you live, okay? Or where uh, this one right here has the sound of K, 
K in Chinese actually in Cantonese actually means to stand right there can you see that the person standing right on this uh, this car sign right there and then um, this is the Sumerian writing they also have a tiny little thing right there showing that that kind of little energy exactly like it here and of course in hieroglyph you can easily find the energy as the car sound okay I want to show you the quickly the human history of migration um, okay because time is running out so I want to show you this is the A and R sound in Chinese this is uh, the car girl in Chinese and this is hieroglyph car this is Sumerian gu and you have the car words say in English and we have the pet sound actually in Chinese this all mean the food even though you see the bull head it all means the food and then this is hieroglyph sharing the same sound pet pet okay pet but this is the foot of the foot of furniture and this is the base in English and of course the foot and this is even Mayan has something very strangely related the P and the P is the footprint very similar to this and then the Greek has carried the P pi sound the post is the food and then the boss actually means the bull right there so we throw words backward and forward and this is Chinese as I said the stool the gay your base and this is cash you know the in Sumerian and you can have the word gate in English which means your uh, the movement movement of your foot and here it is and um, that goes to the the pre or the oh it doesn't work okay, okay the pre or the post which means yeah I developed them into different uh, category you see the animals there the foot is there the action is there and also the position we all have the same sound representing the same same ideas okay I think our uh, time is running out today um, I am going to uh, end this right here thank you very much I'm sorry that I have to go so fast and uh, I hope you get to see all this bull head all those unseen energy that existed uh, since ancient time that we share as the core of our language our writing and I guess we can understand ourselves better